welcome to in jamaica and if this is your first time here please subscribe click the notification bell and stick around to see places in jamaica this video is aimed at giving you a general overview but you can check the video description for added information currently we are driving northeast on main street in ocherius towards the ocherius clock tower To the left is Moon Palace Jamaica All-Inclusive Resort. The journey from Ocherius to Montego Bay should take about 1 hour 49 minutes, covering a distance of 100.3 kilometers, approximately 62.3 miles via A1 Road. We'll be driving in three parishes. Firstly, St. Anne Parish, where we are at now, 2nd, Trelawney Parish, 3rd, St. James Parish, which is the final destination. Notably, Montego Bay is the capital of St. James Parish. Montego Bay is also Jamaica's second city and major cruise ship port. Just ahead is the Ocherius Clock Tower and we'll be making the right onto Evelyn Street. Turning onto Evelyn Street towards the Ocherius Bypass. Ocherius, Spanish for eight rivers, is a town in the parish of St. Anne on the north coast of Jamaica and is more widely referred to as Ochi by locals. Beginning as a sleepy fishing village, Ocherius has seen explosive growth to become a popular tourist destination featuring duty-free shopping, a cruise ship terminal, world-renowned tourist attractions and several beaches and acclaimed resorts. The name Ocherius is a possible misnomer as there are not currently eight rivers in the area. It could be a British corruption of the original Spanish name Las Charreras, the waterfalls, a name given to the village because of the nearby Duns River Falls. To the right is the Ocherias police station and to the left is the Ocherias transport center. Just ahead is the Ocherius Bypass. Going left on the Ocherius Bypass Road will take you towards White River, St. Mary Parish, Portland Parish, as well as to Kingston via Junction Main Road. But we'll be making the ride towards St. Anne's Bay, Runaway Bay, Discovery Bay, Falmouth in Trelawney Parish, and to Montego Bay in St. James Parish. Ocherius was originally settled by a tribe of Arawak called Taino, who settled in Jamaica and called the land Shimaka, meaning land of wood and water. After Christopher Columbus landed in 1494 and claimed the island for Spain, Ocherius was named Las Chereras, meaning rapid rivers. The Tainos were ultimately obliterated by disease, slavery and war. Some also committed suicide, presumably to escape their conditions as slaves. To the left is the Eight Rivers Town Centre shopping mall and just ahead to the right is Graham Street which will take you back onto Main Street, Ocherius. Spain brought the first enslaved Africans to Jamaica in 1517 to work on plantations throughout Jamaica 
including Ocherius. In May 1655, British forces seized the island from the Spanish. The English misunderstood, misinterpreted, and mispronounced the Spanish name Chorreras and called the town Ocherius, which sounds close enough. In 1657 and 1658, the Spanish, sailing from Cuba, failed to retake the island in a fierce battle in and around Ocherius, known as the Battle of Las Chorreras. Just ahead is Milford Road. Taking the exit on the left ear onto Milford Road will take you to Fern Gully, Spanish town in St. Catherine Parish and to Kingston. But we'll be continuing straight towards St. Anne's Bay, Runaway Bay, Discovery Bay, Falmouth in Trelawney Parish and to Montego Bay in St. James Parish. Going right will take you onto Main Street Ocherius. In addition to being a port of call for cruise ships, Ocherius also hosts cargo ships at Reynolds Pier. Ocherius Town is served by both Sangster International Airport, 97 kilometers, approximately 60 miles west of Ocherius in the parish of St. James, and Ian Fleming International Airport, 17 kilometers, approximately 10 miles east of Ocherius in the parish of St. Mary. To the right is the Turtle River Park. We are now en route towards St. Anne's Bay. The trip may be a bit fast at some point as I'm only showing you the route from Ocherius to Montego Bay. Along the journey, I'll point out some major places and turns. On the right is Main Street Ocherius, which will take you towards the Ocherius Cruise Terminal and also into the heart of Ocherius. On the left is Columbus Heights. A few meters to the right, you can find Turtle Beach, also called Ocherius Bay Beach. On the right is the Reynolds Pier. The Reynolds Pier, often referred to as James Bond Pier, is Ocherius second cruise terminal. Reynolds Pier, previously used for the export of bauxite, is now used for cruise ship docking only when more than one ship is calling at Ocherius on the same day. It was also used for exporting sugar. The Reynolds Pier connection to James Bond is that it was actually shot in the James Bond movie, Dr. No. The pier still looks like an industrial site. The surrounding area has not been commercially developed. As a result, Many cruise passengers walk from the pier to the center of Ocherius along the road that connects the James Bond Pier to Ocherius Town Center.
on the right is Little Duns River Beach. On the left is Mystic Mountain, Jamaica, Rainforest Adventures. On the right is Dolphin Cove Ocherius. To the left you can find Duns River Falls and on the right is Duns River Beach. We are now leaving Ocherius, entering Marmee Bay. On the right is Pearly Beach. To the right, you can find Laughing Waters. Crossing Roaring River. To the left is Mame Bay Water Wheel. The water wheel provided water for Jackson Sugar Plantation during the colonial era. Entering Mame Bay Roundabout. The first exit here on the left will take you south to St. Catherine Parish and Kingston via the Edward Siaga Highway, same as Jamaica North South Highway, Toll Road. We have made the second exit to St. Anne's Bay, Runaway Bay, Discovery Bay, Falmouth and Montego Bay.
to the right is Sandals Duns River. The road on the left is Greenwich Parkway, which will take you to Greenwich Park. To the right is Hotel Rio, Ocharius. Entering Jaxal. The road on the left is the A1 Davis Town to Greenwich Park Road and that road will take you to Stair Town, Chalky Hill, Davis Town, Golden Grove, Moneague as well as to St. Catherine Parish and Kingston. The sign on the left reads St. Anne's Bay 3 km approximately 1.8 miles Priory 6 kilometers approximately 3.7 miles runaway bay 19 kilometers approximately 11.8 miles to the right is Jaxall manor and Jaxall country club To the right you can find Nuts Ford Express Droxall.
entering St. Anne's Bay. Notably, St. Anne's Bay is the capital of St. Anne Parish. The road on the left will take you into St. Anne's Bay Town, to Sussex, Limehall, Higgin Town and other places. in Negro River. On the left is Bravo Street and that road will take you into St. Anne's Bay Town, to Sussex, Limehall, Higgin Town and other places. We are now at the St. Anne's Bay roundabout and the first exit here to the left also will take you into St. Anne's Bay Town, to Marcus Garvey Technical High School and to St. Anne's Bay Hospital. We have made the second exit to Priory, Runaway Bay, Discovery Bay, Falmouth and Montego Bay. Crossing Church River. Entering Priory. To the left is the historic civil estate, which is home to the civil great house and the heritage park. The land encompasses thousands of years of Jamaica's history, having been occupied years before the New World was discovered. It contains the remains of Merma an indigenous Taino village that Christopher Columbus encountered upon first landing in Jamaica in 1494. It was the first 16th century Spanish settlement in Jamaica called Sevilla La Nueva, New Seville, the first capital of Jamaica under Spanish rule. On the right is Fantasy Beach, also Priory Beach. The road on the left will take you to Civil Heights.
Seville Estate is one of the first sites in the region to receive a steady flow of African slaves, and the location of the post-1655 British sugar plantation known as Seville. Today, the Seville Great House is the center point of the Seville Heritage Park, home to a museum showing an interpretive exhibition of the property's history from the earliest evidence of human presence in the area. On the left is Middle Street. Crossing Parsogoli. Just ahead to the right is the St. Anne's Bay Infirmary. And on the left is the Priory to Bamboo Road. And that road will take you to Tanglewood, Liberty, Cool Shade, Free Hill, Banks Mountain, Bamboo, and other places. To the right, is Enchinbrook Anchor. We are now leaving Priory, entering Richmond. HMS Enchinbrook was the French privateer Austria, which the British captured in 1778 and took into the Royal Navy. During the 1780s, Admiral Peter Parker appointed Lieutenant John Markham to command the Enchinbrook. Markham's orders were to cruise off the east end of Jamaica to protect trade. On the left is Plantation Village. HMS Enchinbrook left Port Royal and almost immediately started to take on water. The next day, Markham decided to try to get to St. Anne's Bay, but as the ship approached the harbor, she stopped responding to the helm and she ran aground on the west reef going into the harbor. Despite numerous efforts, her crew was unable to get her over or off the reef. A schooner came alongside and took off her guns, some stores, and her crew. The ship then sank that night. On the left is Richmond Estate. Later the ship anchor was retrieved and placed as a roadside marker in Priory, St. Anne's Bay. Crossing Cave River. The road on the left will take you to Chester.
entering Lawlands. We are now driving on the Lawlands main road. Crossing Lawlands Great River. The road on the left will take you to Mines and Mount Zion. Entering Salem and Runaway Bay. The sign on the left reads, Welcome to Runaway Bay. The upcoming road on the left will take you to Beverly and Hampton View. On the left is Salem Taxi Stand. Runaway Bay. There has been much debate about how the town got its name. Some believe it got the name because it was once an escape route for runaway slaves from inland sugar plantations who ran away to Cuba. Others argue that it once was the fleeing point of the last Spanish troops after their defeat by the British in the 1600s. Runaway Bay was first developed for tourism in the 1960s with the opening of Cardiff Hall, which is now a housing estate. When the old Cardiff estate was converted to a combination of luxury hotels, golf courses and private villas, the town of Runaway Bay developed its own character.
to the right is Jewel Paradise Cove Beach Resort and Spa, all inclusive adult resort. To the right is Flavors Beach, also Runaway Bay Beach. On the left is Runaway Bay Golf Course. On the right is Jewel Runaway Bay Beach Resort and Water Park all-inclusive resort on the right is Franklin D Resort and Spa On the left is Runaway Bay Basic School. Also here on the left is Runaway Bay Police Station. We are now at Runaway Bay Square. The road to the left is the B13 Runaway Bay to Orange Valley Road. And that road will take you to Bel Air, Orange Valley, Brownstown, Bamboo, Jackson Town, Alexander and other places. To the right is Bahia Principal Grand Jamaica, all-inclusive resort.
crossing Pear Tree Bottom River. We are now leaving Runaway Bay, entering Discovery Bay. Discovery Bay is also known locally as Dry Arbor and gives its name to the Dry Arbor Mountain in St. Anne. There is a dispute as to whether Christopher Columbus first landed in Discovery Bay or in Savilla La Nueva, east of Discovery Bay, in 1494. However, Discovery Bay sits on a bay of the same name. The bay was originally named Puerto Seco, Dry Arbor, by Christopher Columbus. Because, unlike the neighboring Rio Buena Bay, there are no permanent rivers flowing into it. The sign on the left reads, you are entering Discovery Bay. Majority of the town residents are of African descent. The original Taino Arawak residents did not survive the Spanish conquest in the 16th century. On the right is Ultimate Jerk Center and on the left is Green Grotto Caves. Visitors to the Green Grotto Caves can see a relic of the native Taino Arawak lifestyle there. It is said that many Spaniards escaped the English invasion of 1655 through secret passages in the caves with the help of Arawaks and the African slaves in exchange for the slaves freedom. A few meters to the left is St. George's Lake, same as Green Grotto Lake. To the right, you can find Discovery Bay All Age School. The road on the left will take you to Dumbarton, Orange Valley, Minard Estate, Stewart Town, Brownstown and other places. On the right is Porto Seco Beach Park.
to the right is port roads. The port handles shipments of alumina and bauxite for Naranda Bauxite Limited. The road on the left will take you into Old Folly. Crossing Dry Arbor Gully and the road on the left will take you to Woodstone and Red Valley. To the left is Naranda Bauxite Limited, formerly St. Anne Bauxite Jamaica Limited and prior to that Kaiser Jamaica Bauxite Company. Naranda Jamaica Bauxite Partners 2 is a partnership between Naranda Bauxite Limited, a Jamaican limited liability company and the government of Jamaica. On the right is Columbus Park. Naranda Bauxite Limited has a 49% interest in the partnership and holds and operates the physical mining assets and operations. The government of Jamaica owns the remaining 51%. A concession from the government of Jamaica permits Naranda Bauxite Limited to mine bauxite in Jamaica through 2030. Bauxite is mined at St. Anne and the ore is transported via railway to port roads. There, it is dried and shipped to its customers. A considerable portion of the bauxite mined at St. Anne is shipped to the Gramercy Refinery in Louisiana, where it is refined into alumina. Entering Rio Bueno and also entering Trelawney Parish and the sign on the left reads Welcome to Trelawney. Here is the St. Anne and Trelawney Parish border crossing Rio Bueno River. The road on the left will take you to Jackson Town and the road on the right will take you into 
we are bueno. Just beneath is the B5 Rio Bueno to Jackson Town Road. You can access this road by taking the right we passed earlier into Rio Bueno. And the B5 Rio Bueno to Jackson Town Road will take you to Calabar District, the birthplace of Calabar High School, to Jackson Town, Sawyers, Mahogany Hall, Alps, Ulster Spring, and the other places. Entering Braco. The name Calabar was brought to Jamaica by slaves from Nigeria, West Africa, where there is an old river port city by that name. In 1839, three leading English Baptist ministries working in Jamaica worked to create a college to train native Baptist ministers. Out of this effort, Calabar Theological College was found in 1843, sited in the village of Calabar, near Rio Bueno in Trelawney Parish. The British named Calabar after the Calabari Kingdom in Nigeria of the same name. In 1868, Calabar College was removed to Kingston. The sign on the left reads, Duncan's 7 kilometers, approximately 4.3 miles, Falmouth 19 kilometers, approximately 11.8 miles, Montego Bay 53 kilometers, approximately 32.9 miles away. sign on the right reads, you are now leaving Braco, entering Duncan's.
on the left is the Duncan's main road and that road will take you into Duncan's towards Clarkstown, Parnassus, Kinloss and the other places. On the left is also the Duncan's main road, which will take you into Duncan's towards Clarkstown, Parnassus, Kinloss and other places. We are now at Cary Park. The sign on the left reads Falmouth 10 kilometers, approximately 6.2 miles, Montego Bay 44 kilometers, approximately 27.3 miles, Lucy 81 kilometers, approximately 50.3 miles away. The road on the left will take you into refuge. To the right is Tuat Castle. There you will find the ruins of an impressive cut stone mansion which became known as Stuart Castle. The building was originally fortified for protecting against attack. There are loopholes for firing muskets placed strategically around the entire building. From all indications, the building seemed to be of three stories consisting of a cellar, ground floor and a first floor. It is a rectangular stone building with square towers at opposite corners. To the right is Coral Spring Village.
on the left will take you into Coral Spring. To the right, you can find Burwood Beach. To the right is Royalton White Sands and Royalton Blue Waters Luxury Resort, all inclusive. To the right, you can find Luminous Lagoon, also glistening waters. Entering Rock. The road on the right should be able to take you into Falmouth, but the sign on the left indicates that the road is closed at the bridge. We are now driving on the A1 Falmouth Bypass Road. On the left is the B11 Stewart Town to Rock Road and that road will take you to the Trelawney Multipurpose Stadium, to Florence Hall Village, Grange, Daniel Town, Water Valley, Idol, Long Pond, Clarkstown and other places.
on the left is Egg Primary School and also Egg Basic School. Crossing the Marta Bray River and the exit on the left will take you north onto Market Street which will then take you into Falmouth south onto the B15 Marta Bray to Wakefield Road which will take you into Marta Bray, Granville, Perth Town, Sherwood Content which is Usain Bolt's birthplace to Bunkers Hill, Wakefield and the other places. On the left is William Nib Memorial High School. A few meters to the left is Alan High School. Usain St. Leobold, born 21st of August 1986 in Sherwood Content, Trelawney is a Jamaican retired sprinter, widely considered to be the greatest sprinter of all time. He is the world record holder in the 100 meters, 200 meters and 4x100 meters relay. Growing up in Trelawney, Usain Bolt showed early signs of his exceptional talent at the William Nib Memorial High School where he owned his skills under the guidance of his coach, Fitz Coleman. The road on the right will take you into Falmouth. The sign on the left reads Montego Bay, 27 kilometers, approximately 16.7 miles, Lucy, 66 kilometers approximately 41 miles Negril 104 kilometers approximately 64.6 .6 miles away Entering Salt Marsh The road on the left will take you to Dundee, Seafield, Davistown, Johnson Hill, Orange Valley, Goodwill, Chatham and other places.
entering Greenwood. Here is the Trelawney and St. James Parish border. So we have left Trelawney Parish and we are now in St. James Parish. Welcome to St. James Parish, named after James, Duke of York by Sir Thomas Modiford. St. James was among the second group of parishes to be formed in Jamaica. In about 1655. The others in this group were St. George, St. Mary, St. Anne and St. Elizabeth. St. James Parish was much larger than it is now as it included what are now the separate parishes of Trelawney and Anover. To the left is Greenwood Avenue and Greenwood Avenue will take you into Greenwood and to Greenwood Great House. The parish quickly developed and by the 1780s the capital Montego Bay was regarded next to Kingston as the most flourishing town. Montego Bay was granted city status in the 1980s. St. James is also famous for the event that took place in 1831, the Christmas Rebellion, in which Samuel Sharp, also known as Sam Sharp, planned that after the Christmas holidays of December the 25th to 27, 1831, that the slaves of St. James would begin to rebel passively by refusing to work on less paid. This, however, did not go as planned, as a group of slaves became violent, setting fire to buildings and cane fields. This action spread from estate to estate and was violently suppressed by the government and white plantation owners. Sharp was eventually hung in the Montego Bay market area on May the 23rd, 1832. The Samuel Sharp Rebellion was considered as one of the largest slaves rebellion in the British Caribbean and was one of the longest and most influential 
of the Emancipation Revolts. We are now at Lilliput. On the right is Iberia Star, Rosal Beach, all-inclusive resort. To the left is the John Rollins Success Primary School. On the right is Sea Castle. The road on the left is the Success Farm to Spot Valley Road. And that road will take you to the John Rollins Success Primary School to Barrett Town where you'll find Barrett Town All Aid School and Barrett Town Police Station to Spot Valley and other places. Entering Rosal to the right is Hilton Rosal Resort and Spa and the road on the left is the Rosal to Spot Valley Road which will take you to Spot Valley High School and other places. Crossing Little River The 
road to the left is the Rosal Great House Road, which will take you to Rosal Great House. On the left is Montego Bay Convention Center. At the heart of the Rosal Plantation we passed earlier on the left is the historic and legendary Rosal Great House, a restored architectural masterpiece. It is the most famous great house in Jamaica. The house was built sometime in the 1770s by John Palmer. At its peak, this was a 2,640 hectare, approximately 6,523 acre plantation with more than 2,000 slaves. However, it was Anne Palmer, wife of the builder's grandnephew, who became the focal point of fiction and fact. Visitors to this site are drawn by the allure of the legend of Anne Palmer, the White Witch of Rosal. Tales and imagination have obscured the true history of Rosal Great House. According to legend, the White Witch of Rosal, Anne Palmer, known famously to have killed three husbands and taken on numerous slave lovers, only to die by the hands of the one she loved the most. To the right is Ayat Zilara Rosal All Inclusive Resort. Today, the Great House is one of many attractions on the Rosal Plantation. Restored to its former glory, the Rosal Great House offers both day and night guided tours in over 10 languages. On the right is Half Moon Shopping Village. Notably, there was no evidence of cruelty by Mistress Palmer to slaves. Neither was she murdered by slaves at Rosal. On the right is Half Moon Luxury Resort. On the left is Hospital Montego Bay, private hospital. On the right is Holiday Inn Resort, Montego Bay, all-inclusive. The road on the left will take you into 
Coral Gardens. Just ahead to the left is Sugar Mill Road. We are at Morgan Road and the A1 Northern Coastal Highway intersection. Going right on Morgan Road will take you to Hotel Rio Montego Bay. Going left will take you towards Norwood Gardens. Entering Montego Bay City. We are now at Iron Shore. Montego Bay. Historians agree that the theory with the highest probability is that the name Montego was derived from the Spanish word Monteca, meaning Lord or Butter. An earlier map of Jamaica as the Montego Bay area listed as Bahia de Monteca or Lard Bay. To the right is White House and to the left is Providence Heights.
The region, now known as Montego Bay, had a dense population of wild hogs, which the Spanish were said to have slaughtered in large numbers in order to collect hogs butter, lard, for export to Cartagena. St. James was quickly developed by the sugar planters and grew to great wealth. By the 1780s, the capital, Montego Bay, was regarded next to Kingston as the most flourishing town in the island. Montego Bay was granted city status on October the 9th, 1980 by an Act of Parliament and in 1982 it officially became Jamaica's second city. As mentioned earlier, Montego Bay witnessed the final act of the last slave uprising, the Christmas Rebellion of 1831 to 1832 that engulfed the western parishes. Under martial law, the slaves were tried in the courthouse and over 300 of them were hanged at the parade where there is now a memorial to the leader, Samuel Sharp, better known as Sam Sharp. The upcoming road on the left will take you to Flankers and the road on the right will take you to the JDF Burr Parks. On the left is the University of the West Indies Western Jamaica campus. Welcome to Montego Bay City and to the right is the Sangster International Airport same as Montego Bay Jamaica Airport. We are now entering the Sangster International Airport roundabout. The first exit on the left ear is Queens Drive which will take you to the heart of Montego Bay and to Mongawa Country Club but we are taking the second exit onto Godfidaya Boulevard, formerly Sunset Boulevard which will also take you to the heart of Montego Bay. The third exit will take you to the Sangster International Airport, also known as Montego Bay Jamaica Airport, MBJ. On the left is the Lesser Drive, which will take you onto Queen's Drive.
Godfrey Dyer Boulevard, formerly Sunset Boulevard ends and we'll be turning left onto Jimmy Cliff Boulevard towards Montego Bay City Center. To the right is Kent Avenue which will take you to Dead End Beach, sometimes called Buccaneer Beach. Dead End Beach is right next door to the Donald Songster International Airport. Visitors can enjoy the thrill of watching low-flying aircraft come into land whilst they bathe. We are now driving on Jimmy Cliff Boulevard, formerly Gloucester Avenue. Gloucester Avenue, popularly Ip Strip Montego Bay, was renamed to Jimmy Cliff Boulevard in honor of one of Jamaica's most talented reggae artists. The road got its name, the Ip Strip, due to the number of famous spots lining both sides of the roadway, from the relaxing Doctor's Cave Beach and Margaritaville to restaurants and duty-free shops, among other nightlife activities. The Ip Strip is also known for some beautiful sunsets and tropical panoramic view of the bay. To the right is Doctor's Cave Beach. On the left is Coral Cliff and on the right is Margaritaville, Montego Bay. On the right is Old Hospital Park.
to the right is Gunpoint Beach. On the right is Walter Fletcher Beach. On the left is Fort Street. There you will find the Montego Fort and Old Fort Craft Market.
To the right is Armani Beach Park. Jimmy Cliff Boulevard ends and just to the left is the other end of Queens Drive. We are now at Queens Drive, St. James Street, Arbor Street, Howard Cook Boulevard and Jimmy Cliff Boulevard intersection. Going straight on St. James Street just ahead will take you to Sam Sharp Square but we will be turning right on the A1 Howard Cook Boulevard towards Anova Parish. Turning onto the A1 Howard Cook Boulevard. We are at Market Street intersection. 
Going left on Market Street will take you towards Sam Sharp Square. On the left is Barnett Street. On the left is Railway Lane. On the left is River Bay Road. On the left is Lower Bevin Avenue. Crossing Barnett River. To the right is Catherine Hall Entertainment Center. Continuing on the A1 road will take you into Anova Parish, Toulouse and Negril. Please remember to subscribe to In Jamaica. Give us a like and share and thank you all for watching.